jumping right into it uh, this is an area of you know very special close interest to my heart uh, since i've been working on this area for many uh, for many years uh, you know wanting to propagate this little bit more to our customers in terms of education to our employees to our partners and to our uh, to our investors really so so you know as a one on one you know let me just spend a few minutes on what is esg uh, because i know this you know there's this a lot of confusion around what esg really stands for what encompasses and there's a lot of people who would use csr and esg interchangeably although they do have some overlap they're not the same so uh, with that esg in very simple terms stands for environment social and governance now some people uh, you know will see you know can you encapsulate this into uh, a simple line a message this is how organizations measure and focus how far along their organization is on the sustainability and ethical path now if i take a step below that esg then lays down the foundation of how an organization puts together its mission and vision to operate ethically responsibly and ultimately in a sustainable manner as a guiding principle now environment uh, is a very very broad term uh, it provides the framework for tracking disclosing how our businesses on a day to day basis create positive or negative impact on the environment that we work in now when i say environment uh, you know a simplified example to compare with us is the carbon emissions so if you are running in you know a bpo uh, if you managing a bpo and you have thousands of you know running a business back and forth between office and home you're creating negative impact on the environment if you change that you know fleet of petrol or diesel engines into evs you've reduced and in some cases maybe even created negative impact on the environment it focuses on creating a diverse safe and a fair work environment so how do we uh, you know you know uh, take the social environment more from the encompassment from csr in the traditional forms so an example uh, are we paying our employees compliant and fair wages are they you know meeting the minimum wage standards are we paying equal pay for you know for gender parity and equality this is how the social element of the esg uh, program comes in now governance ties environment and sustainability together in a way as a framework businesses can then see transparently through its policies and governance mechanisms whether they are doing adequate work to protect the rights of all the stakeholders and when i say all the stakeholders i'm talking about our employees our customers our supply chain partners our community the larger social community and you know one which is very important to many of us uh, and and uh, equally in their form is our shareholders and investors now now that we have a good sense of what esg stands for let me you know give you a moment on why it's important to you why should you care about esg today i mean esg is not something new it's been there for many many years uh, many organizations have taken marky uh, you know steps towards this itc is a great itc hotels is a great example where they've taken prominent steps to become one of the world's greenest and most eco friendly hotel chains so why is it important now and why we talking today Well, let me start with first uh, creating a work environment which attracts the best talent, which retains the best talent, and becomes an employer of choice for you know for people wanting to come work with us. That's something which is very important to us as facility managers, as real estate professionals, as business leaders. This is where ESG comes in, helps us doing that. The the social parameter. The second one, which I'll tell you, which is an important one, is. there are now regulatory requirements sebi the regulatory body that regulates all listed organizations in india has now mandated that top 1000 yes top 1000 organizations listed as per the market capitalization must now report on esg this is something which is here and now in the current financial year which ends in march 2023 we would all have to jump forward to provide our esg reporting to the public domain this is now not an option not something that you do uh, 
uh, as a best practice, but now a norm that SEBI is inculcated. And I believe the government is going to expand this remit the same way they've expanded the CSR spend remit. Now, the third one uh, is something we have to uh, look at from a broad business and a CEO's perspective. If we were to be our supporters to our CEOs, our leaders, we would look at how we can support in making our business more investor friendly, more attractive for both public investors and private investors coming in. And you'll be, you know, you'd be surprised to hear this, uh, that this wave of ESG is being quite prominent. Um, as of, as of, uh, you know, as of 2025, we will have 53 uh, trillion dollars. So not million, not billion, trillion. 53 trillion dollars worth of investment focused clearly on just businesses that have good ESG practices. So if you want your business to be one of those, which you know attracts the best you know investors from public and private domains, ESG will be something that you have to work on. Now I'll take a 30 second uh, note on where did ESG come from uh, when I take you back to a wonderful conference that took place in Glasgow, Scotland, November 2021. It's called COP26. Uh, it's a carryover from the Paris conference uh, that took place in the year uh, 2015, where more than 40 countries, including India, made commitments on how they will become net zero. Net zero as in the carbon emissions that we release into our environment, when will we become net zero? Now, India has made a commitment to become net zero by 2070, which means we're all part of this, whether you know it's our businesses, our organizations, our RWAs, our, uh, you know, our buses, our local infrastructure and the government. So this is, you know, a brief history of where, you know, why we're now all working towards this, you know, becoming, you know, neutral in terms of our carbon emissions. So I'm going to break it down into five steps. Step one, you define your ESG goal and mission. And I'll give you some examples to think about it. So you can define a mission. This is how I'm going to reduce my carbon emissions from the fleet of vehicles that we have. An example, uh, Tenon Group has made an active uh, pledge that by 2030, more than 30% of our fleets will be electric. You could make a pledge such as one that you're going to reduce your overall energy cost and consumption by replacing your CFLs with LEDs, which not only reduce energy consumption, which means lower carbon footprint, but also help you reduce uh, the air conditioning costs that you spend in your offices, since CFL generates higher heat uh, remissions as compared to LEDs. Second step is identifying an ESG reporting framework. There's no uh, you know, advantage in having a goal and mission if you can't measure and report it from an independent body. So there are many bodies available across India which help you, you know, get your goals registered, maintained and tracked. Uh, you know, we at 10 on FM have taken a proactive step uh, of working with one of the world's leading sustainability assessment organizations called EcoVadis. It's, you know, it's a French based company. Uh, this is our third year where they have rated us and we've been able to improve our rating from 30% to now 60%. Uh, getting to 90% is a journey. And that's what they've been educating us that you keep measuring and keep improving incremental steps. So that's the second step. Step three, establish baseline and benchmarks. ESG reporting and ESG requirements can't be met in a day. You'll have to do it incremental steps every week, every month by creating baselines benchmark whether it's recording your spend uh, on electricity or you know your fleet size you know how uh, fuel efficient they are looking at your energy cost consumption your water consumption and so on step four is implementing measures now i'll tell you some measures which are you know very uh, public and companies have made this companies like fedex which is one of the largest global logistics company has made a commitment that by 2040 their entire fleet will be ev or you can make simple commitments that we are going to actively work on carbon dioxide removal program. Yes, it's called CDR removal programs. Uh, you know, we at Tenon FM have partnered with an organization called Sankalp Taru, through which we are now planting 100 trees for every customer that we take on board. This is a recorded uh, event. We track uh, how well they're growing and thereby we know how much carbon removal they're doing in terms of creating negative carbon footprint. 
so these are another another way now finally the final step that comes in is monitor evaluate report repeat so monitor evaluate report repeat you go keep going through this journey um and you'll be on your path of uh, you know of becoming a very responsible and uh, way forward in terms of the ESG program now technology plays a big role so you know i i won't you know take the thunder away from some of my colleagues whether it's you know technology in terms of you know chemical pre cleaning whether it is you know using uh you know lower impact chemicals using more automated machines iots but i think that's something that you'll have to look at the journey uh step one that we've taken as as a journey in our organization at anon fm is we've allowed our staff members to be more casually dressed hence i am more casually dressed today because we live in a hot country we live in india uh where summers are longer and by reducing uh, the burden on dressing up every day we are able to increase our temperature for air conditioning by a degree and thereby save 6% on energy cost and another 10% on our carbon footprint regenerating so i'll stop here and i hope uh, the message of esg environment social and governance and taking that journey back to your organization uh, will be helpful